In the last video, we looked at data cleaning, where we created this crop folder, which has a faces cropped from all the images. In this video, we are going to talk about feature engineering, a technique called wavelet transform that can be used to extract the facial features such as eyes, nose and lips, etc. At the end of this tutorial, you will have X and Y uh, data sets ready. Uh, which you can use uh, to train the model. In the last tutorial, we wrote the code till this point where we created this cropped folder, which had all the cropped images. So just to show you once again, see Lionel Messi's face, similarly Maria Sarapova's only faces, and we also manually deleted bad images. So our images are now all clean. Now we are going to do a wavelet transformation on these images. Now wavelet transformation allows you to extract the important features from uh, your image. There are other feature extraction techniques as well, but if you read image processing literature, wavelet transforms are often uh, the most effective way of extracting features. Now. I'm going to show you some functions. So this is the wavelet transformation where you input an image and it will perform the wavelet transformation on top of it using PYWT, uh, Pi wavelet transform library. And it will return you a new image that is your wavelet transform. So the way it's gonna look like is this. So this is the original image. So let me show you the original image, which is this Maria Sarapova's image, okay. This is a colorful image. When I do wavelet transformation, it looks something like this. Now, this for computer is a very important image because it shows a lot of features. You can see the area of eye is differentiated from the area of the forehead, from uh, the nose is visible, etc. So this almost looks like a black and white image and those Important features such as nose, lips, eyes are extracted using white and black color. See, for a computer, this kind of detail is very, very important for doing face detection. Because when you have image like this, which is colorful, it can have variety of shades and variety of colors. And it becomes really difficult task for a classifier to identify such an image. Now, when I threw in this function, you might be thinking, oh, you are just showing us a lot of complex code and we don't know what's going on. Look, I understand that there is some math involved, there is some signal processing involved. And for that reason, uh, if you want to dig deeper, you need to pause this video. You need to get your concepts on signal processing clear. You need to know what is frequency domain, what is time domain, what is Fourier transform. For this, I'm going to point you some resources. The first resource is Iman's YouTube channel. Iman is a good friend of mine. On my request, he created this tutorial where he explains how you can uh, represent an image as a frequency. When you talk about any signal, let's say audio signal, for example, image can also be considered as a signal. It can be presented in two type of domain, right? So image can be presented in a spatial domain, sp meaning like space, you know, X and Y, or it can be represented as a frequency domain. If you're talking about audio signal, it can be represented in a time, do time domain or a frequency domain. So you can go through Iman's channel. He has some awesome tutorials. He explains things in a very, very simple way. So try that. Uh, here is another tutorial. What is signal processing? I'm going to provide all this uh, links in the video description below. Another thing you need to have good understanding on is Fourier transform. For that, three blue, one brown channel has an excellent tutorial. So if you watch this, you will understand how Fourier transform works. Just to give you an idea, Fourier transform will take a complex signal and it will uh, return you the basic signals uh, which makes that complex signal. 
just to give you an idea let's say you are eating some dish let's say you are eating pizza and if you do reverse engineering on pizza what you find is a basic ingredients which is like cheese the the base which is of made up of all purpose flour the vegetables whatever right so similarly when let's say you have a complex signal let's say you have a signal where you have um different instruments playing in and then you have also noise you know in a, we have many noise cancellation devices so how do they actually cancel the noise so that is something that you need to think about and that they do using fourier transform because fourier transform can separate out the voice of let's say your drums voice uh, the the voice of the vocal voice the noise it can separate out all these signals into different frequencies and using the frequency filters you can um, suppress uh, some frequency or you can um, amplify certain frequencies you might have seen in audio audio devices where you can uh, increase like a uh, treble or jazz you know all of this is possible because of fourier transform and wavelet transform is kind of similar to fourier transform it is little different i'm not going to go too much into detail because that's a huge subject on signal processing i might have to spend like 6 month you know just on that topic and for that reason we have uh iman's amazing channel and you can refer to his tutorials okay so let's come back so just assume if you don't want to just worry too much about this just assume that by creating this black and white image you are extracting the important facial features which is going to be very useful to our classifier because when you think about maria sarapova's face how do you detect her face she has eyes at a certain location on her face her eye size is different than other players so when you detect if this is a maria sarapova or this is virat kohli uh you use these features like how small or big the eyes are whether the person has a mustache or a beard uh what is the size of the lips the the structure of the face and all of those fine details are given by this uh wavelet uh, transform image to us okay so this i showed it for one image what we are going to do is now we are going to create this wavelet transform image for all the images in our crop folder now uh when we create these images um we will vertically stack these two images so what we'll do is so just to give you an idea so we'll take this image maria sarapova's image okay so let me just visually kind of show you because that might become useful so let's say i take this image here okay and i use for example ms paint in ms paint i copy this image okay so i have this raw image now raw image also has important features i am not saying it doesn't therefore we are using raw and the wavelet transform image both so this is the raw image and i have this wavelet transform image and just think that i am vertically stacking them so this will be the input of our classifier because a raw image can uh, give certain information to your classifier at the same time wavelet transform image will have a lot of um, meaningful important features and for that reason the next piece of code that i am writing what i am doing is i am vertically stacking these two images and i'm doing going to do that for all the images in our crop folder okay so how do we do that so we saw that initially we created this particular dictionary so let's see what is this dictionary this dictionary is very important actually so this dictionary has a key which is a player name and the values 
are the cropped images. Okay, so similarly you will see Maria Sarapova and all the cropped images of Maria Sarapova. Now I'm going to iterate through this dictionary. How do you iterate through the dictionary? It's a simple Python thing. You can use dot items function. So see, if I do this, I am iterating to that. And for each training file, so training files is nothing but this list, okay? This list of images. So I am now gonna go through all the training files, okay? So the first loop will iterate through my sports person, second loop will iterate through every image for that particular sports person. All right. So what do I do now is I first read an image because training image will be the path of the image. And here I am reading the image using OpenCV. All right. Now I need to do scaling because the images could be of different size and we need to have same size when we are training our classifier. So I'm just resizing it using OpenCV. And I get now scaled a raw image, okay? So just, just think that this is the scale image, okay? At the top, 32 by, okay, let me put it here. So this is that first image, 32 by 32. That is my scale image. Now the second thing I need is wavelet transform image but that has to be in a same dimension as well okay so all right so i'm this is how i get my wavelet transform image w2d is the function this is doing wavelet transformation i got this function from stack overflow i'm going to provide the credit thanks stack overflow you know like Stack Overflow we use all the time because we don't want to reinvent the wheel and we can just get ready-made functions. Okay, once I get this image, I need to scale that image as well. And now I scale this image. I call it scale image har, okay? Both are 32 by 32. How do you vertically stack them? Well, NumPy has a function to vertically stack them. So here I am saying numpy vertically stack those images, my scaled image and my scaled uh, wavelet transform image. Okay, my scale image has uh, 32 by 32 into three because it's a colorful image. So RGB three channels, that's why three. The wavelet transform image doesn't have colors. It's like a gray image. So I'm gonna combine this into combine image. Let's call it combine image, fine. I'm fine with that. And now I need to create X and Y's. Guys, we are reaching an interesting stage because now we are creating X and Y, which means we are kind of ready for the model training. So in the X, which is a Python list, simple Python list, nothing fancy. I'm going to put my combined image. All right, what is Y, everyone? So Y is a name of the celebrity. Now I cannot put celebrity name here because X and Y has to be number. So somehow I need to generate a number, some number for each of my celebrities. So let's do that. How do I do that? Okay, so I'm gonna grow, go through all my celebrities and generate a class date something like this so go through all celebrities and start with count just assign them some number you know just randomly doesn't matter which number you assign you need just some some class number and once you have this dictionary now this dictionary can be used to uh, a return a number for a celebrity name so now I'm getting a number for each of these celebrities I'm going to execute this so this error apparently it's happening because we had all these 
images in this dictionary but we manually deleted some images so some of the images are not available so one thing we can do is we can again iterate through all the folders and get the new images or we can just say if image so if uh, image so if the image is not present the cv2 im read will return a none so i just added if image is none then you continue and when i executed it i have my x and y ready and let's see what is x and y really so if you look at x shape okay x is a list so it doesn't have a shape really but if you look at the length of the x it is 162 uh, if you go and count the images uh, in your folder like all the images in this five folder it will be 162 so each element in x is an image and the size of each image is 4096 so 4096 is what so you see here 32 into 32 into 3 so that is our raw pixel like raw image the x and y is 30 to 32 3 is for rgb and then for wavelet transform image another 32 into 32 so you get 4096 and if you want to just look at like the first image for curiosity it's nothing but the you know it's some number which is representing the color or like the the shade of an of an image because machine learning model can only understand numbers so that's why we are doing this and i'm gonna do one more thing to x i will convert things to float okay and i'm just reshaping it just to make sure the shape is 162 by 4096 okay and now these images are convert are now represented as a float number you see like dot after that and that float number later on when we train the model uh, you know we might get some errors that's why i have uh, converted that as a float if it is integer it will wo still work but the sklearn apis will uh, give you a lot of warnings so just to avoid that i'm uh, converting it to float all right so that's i think all we had for this video now we have x and y ready uh, to begin our model training in the next video we are going to do model training and then uh, in the video after that we will do uh, fine tuning uh, or hyperparameter tuning using grid search cv and we will select the best model uh, for our image classification thank you bye